what it do family we back for another video it's your boy d this is d's daily dd don't forget it and i'm always going to start by saying this is not financial advice this is never financial advice don't take it as that take it for educational and entertainment purposes only all right fam i know i've been gone for a minute but you know i've been just making sure i've been researching making sure that you know amc is still on the threshold list and i do believe that we are about to see some wild volatility now okay and i'm gonna bring you the receipts i'm gonna show you what i'm talking about i really think if you're an amc shareholder you're going to like this information a lot all right so keep this in mind but always do your own research do your own dd make your own decisions when it comes to investing and trading i'm just here to bring you some public information and give you my thoughts and opinions on it and what i'm seeing with my eye all right so you know, I am somebody who personally believes in uh, what's called Thurton, uh, Newton's third law. So for every action, there's a reaction. All right. So y'all remember when we went from 12 to 72, that was the action. So the reaction was coming down, right? Coming all the way back down to five, being shorted, you know, from what my opinion is, you know, abusive naked short selling, abusive short selling, all that stuff, the market makers and just grimy bastards that are doing things that they probably should not be doing right in my opinion so the the newton's third law what it says is his third law states that for every action force in nature there is an equal and opposite reaction if object a exerts a force on object b object b also exerts an equal opposite force on object a right so it's kind of like a balance kind of like a yin yang right so that is what i believe and that's going to tie into what I'm going to be talking about. And I'm going to be focusing on the threshold list. I think it is something that we have to keep an eye on. I think it is important. And I'm going to break down some information that I looked up on it on, on specifically what is rule 204. All right. So that's the intro, guys. Thanks for rocking with me, especially all of you who have been, you know, subscribed for months. Um, you know, I've just been pretty busy with work. I haven't been able to do daily videos, but. I don't want to just put out videos just to put them out or right? i always want to make sure i have the best information the best content and you know some substance to it all right guys so let's just jump into it let's talk about what i want to talk about what's up family all right let's get it it's time to pay attention you know grab your beverage grab your snack this is going to be interesting okay let's uh first off remember that you know, GME was on the threshold list for 39 consecutive trading days. GameStop shares, right, which soared from $20 to $400 in roughly a month, remained on the threshold securities list for 39 consecutive days from late December 2020 until early February 2021. Since then, GME has not made it on its way to its list. And this is dated February 23rd, 2023. So I got that screenshot. Now, Noon's third law. This is the law that I was talking about, right? If you want to go look it up, that's the one. And um, just looking at some numbers real quick, you know, they did cover some of the shorts that were open because there was 131 million shares that were on loan. Now there's 125 million shares that are shorted, according to Fintel, right? So that's where you see that these shares to borrow pop up, and there's still a high fee of 102%. 105% average. Okay. So there's that again. Remember AMC has been on the threshold list for 24 trading days now, which, uh, tonight we get the update. If you saw my other videos, I've explained what it is. Excuse me. Um, I've explained that it's the trading days, right? And we get one update every day. So we're going to get our update today at 10 PM Eastern. And I believe it will still be on there. I believe that whoever created these synthetics, these, you know, whoever's got these FTDs is responsible for them and is on the hook for them right now. I'm going to explain a lot to you guys, all right? So pay attention. Okay. This is what I'm talking about specifically, rule 204. Okay. When the securities, when a security gets on the threshold list, from what I've researched, I believe they have, you know, 13 consecutive days. And then if they need, there's a... A rule here that says that talks about t plus 35 right 35 calendar days not trading days calendar days so you see that i'll just read the rule to you just to give you the the basic information on it so 
Rule 204 provides an extended period of time to close out certain failures to deliver, specifically if a failure to deliver position results from the sale of a security that a person is deemed to own and that such person intends to deliver as soon as all the restrictions on the delivery have been removed. The firm has up to 35 calendar days following the trade date. Today for AMC was the 35th day, right? T plus 35, it expires at midnight from the original day that it got on the list, which was February 2nd, 2023. And that's why like, I know the dates, I know everything because I've been looking at it all week and I always want to bring the receipts. So the firm, right, has 35 days to close out the failure to deliver by purchasing securities of like and kind quantity. So that's the only problem I see with it, that it's like and kind quality, not necessarily that specific security, but like and kind quality. That's the only loophole that I see with this. Sorry, but such additional time is warranted and does not undermine the goal of reducing failure to delivers because these are sales owned by own securities that cannot be delivered by the settlement date due solely to processing delays outside the sellers or brokers dealers control moreover deliveries re required to be made on such sales as soon as all restrictions on delivery have been removed in situations where a person is deemed to own a security that are limited to these spe specified rules and rule 200 of regulation show a common example of a deemed to own security that cannot be delivered by the settlement date is a security subject to resale restrictions of rule 144 under the securities act of 1933. again i'm not a lawyer i'm not a financial advisor this is not financial advice this is just from the uh actual sec website and so on all right so right here key points about regulation show so keep that in mind you know keep, stay with me i know it's it's going to be a lot of information but it's crucial information all right this is gme Jimmy was on the on the threshold list for 39 days, like I stated previously. It was um, T plus 35 on 112 slash 2021, right? Which is right here. 112, 2021 is the T plus 35 from the original day it got on the list. I'm not just talking about the general T plus 35 from the FTDs. I'm talking about T plus 35 when it gets on the threshold list, right? So we got that from 12, 8, 2020, 35 calendar days. T plus 12, or 112, sorry. Volume was dry on 112, 21 at 28 million. Dry, right? Low volume. Just even from the prior weeks and all that, the days, this is a daily chart. Super dry volume. And then guess what? On the 36th day, because I believe the extension period was done and they had to cover those FTDs, whether they wanted to or not. Okay. On the 36th day, volume spiked to 578 million after the T plus 35 expired. So the day before on the 12th, right here, 28 million. The next day, 578 million volume. That's insane. That had to be FTDs being covered. That's what started the run and the explosion, right? In my opinion, that's the way I look at it. So I'm looking at this, all this information from, um, you know, GME. All right, next, we can move on to AMC right now. So AMC has been on the threshold list now for what, 24 trading days. Today would be the 25th day, okay, trading days. So all this price action here, you see, to me, it's fake, doesn't really matter, it doesn't, it's not real, because if they would have delivered and not created all those FTDs while we were running up, you know, in my opinion, the price would be way higher, but that is how they were, you know, one of the ways they're able to suppress the price, how they're able to keep it down by creating these FTDs uh, that have been piling up, but they don't want it. You know, remember we broke out of the wedge here. They don't they don't want that technical breakout, right? Because the run will start and it will start squeezing, in my opinion. But keep in mind, today was T plus 35 from 2 to 23. The extension expires tonight at midnight. And the reason I say and I'm pretty confident that it's going to expire we're going to see some crazy stuff, you know, in the next few days. Could be tomorrow. We could just see a huge run, a huge bump up, right, because of volume. But we need that volume to come in because it's the same thing right now where the volume is just dry. After we did have a good volume pump, there was 122 million shares there, 113 million shares. And then it just dried up. And today it was, what, uh, 16 million volume. Yesterday it was 19 million volume. So super dry. Any single time that I've seen AMC do this where the volume dries out, you know, there is a huge pop that comes usually uh, after that. OK, anytime the volume gets super low, like look right here to huge volume starts coming in. Um, 
So that's my theory right now, right? That's that's why I've been kind of quiet. I've just been making sure that AMC has been on the threshold list so that this theory holds up. Okay. And every single time that AMC has those big, right, the past two times that it had the huge gap ups. Let me see. Uh, I don't want this video to be too long. I want to make sure people understand this information. So we're going to be wrapping this up soon. So you got the the volume, right? I talked about the volume and you have this, this little flag here, right? To me, that's a little flag. And you come back, you look at the past, same thing. Uh, every single time you see the, the squeeze happen the past two times, you have this little flag. The volume dries up bad, right? So right before this huge volume pop, we had 113 million volume compared to like 213, 700 million, 660 million volume. Um, so that was the other thing I wanted to, to say, right? So it, it stayed, this is Jimmy, it stayed on the threshold list. T plus 36 or 35 to 36 day, it explodes. And then the run lasts about like nine days. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 days. I, I would say around here, 11, 12 days when you see the peak. And then, you know, they took away the buy button. In my opinion, that's how they got it to start to come down. They took away the buy button. They, people started to sell the real shares and they were able to get off the threshold list. All right. That's just my theory. Um. So again, when you go back to the first run, you had this little flag, volume dried up. You know, you had a little volume pump, volume dried up, and then you saw the, the huge gap up. Let's see how long this one lasted, right? So when you have that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, about fourteen days total trading days that you saw the the run and you saw the, the top of the squeeze there. Okay. So that's where I'm at, guys. Like I said, just paying attention. Hopefully tonight, right, we get the final day because, in my opinion, whoever created these FTDs is stuck with them because it has to do with the vote. It's all very interesting, the timing, all right, because the vote is on Tuesday, right, March 14th, and it's at 11 a.m. during market hours. So does did Adam Aaron already know, right? Did he plan all this around these dates? Could be possible. Excuse me. Um, this is the FTDs. Every, every single time I've talked about this, right, I pointed out that every time these FTDs pile up, there comes a point where they have to close them out and, you know, the, the price finally runs right here too, right? You start low FTDs and they start to pile up and we see the huge run. This is where we're currently at since back then, back here around here, uh, which is August 4th, 22. Until now, uh, you see all these FTDs pile up and I believe that they're at the the point where it's going to go there's no amc shares left and so on so um this is the latest ftd report you know i've never seen it this bad and i don't even need to see the next one which comes out around march 15th march 16th because amc has been on the threshold list so i know that you know the next report is going to have at least 2.5 million fail to delivers per day um up until at least that point right as long as it stays on the threshold list that's the the number that it, it needs those three requirements to stay on the threshold list um so you, one last thing guys real quick just to wrap this up you know we see the options chain for next week that is ridiculous uh, on march 17th right so 630,000 calls that are out of the money right now that are open plus these and then you have the puts that are 272,000 that are in the money and 909,000 that are out of the money all right so real quick in my opinion that's, you know, this is how they're also suppressing the price. There's another form of short selling, sometimes called a synthetic short. This involves selling call options or buying puts. Selling calls makes you have negative deltas, a negative stock equivalent position. And so does buying puts. Neither of the positions requires borrowing stock or failing to deliver stock. So in my opinion, that's what the market makers are using right now. The options chain to suppress the price. Um, and it's all, again, the vote is on the 14th and that's the week of this Friday. This is a Friday, right? 317. So, um, there's the information guys. This is the options chain for March 17th. And these, these are the calls, right? So there's a lot of calls at 10. So if we can get past 10 or $12, I believe this thing is going to go, uh, in my opinion, not financial advice going back down, because if you look at here, it looks like this is the breaking point on the put side. There's 123,000 puts that are open right now that are in the money. Um, but these could of course go out of the money if we go above $10. All right. So just, just, that's what I got for you guys today. It's kind of weird, right? Uh, credit Suisse's largest shareholder has sold his entire stake in the bank. 
and Credit Suisse loses one of the biggest backers, right? I was talking about that. Um, and then today, um, they announced Credit Suisse, right, that they were going to delay their earnings report because they got a call from the SEC. I think that's very strange. timing as well with everything that's going on right now with AMC on the threshold list. Um, I don't have proof, right, that they have shorts or don't have shorts, but I believe they have shorts on their books, and that could be part of it. And then, of course, the tweet um, that Adam Aaron put out, many of you, and we are aware that AMC Entertainment has been on the threshold list for three plus weeks, indicating a number of FTDs. Some of you may be pleased to learn that we have contacted both FINRA and the NYSC, asking them to look closely at the trading of our stock. So, Exactly. Like I'm trying to say is the timing of all this is just very coincidental. And, uh, you know, he has a lot of experience at Aaron, whether you like him or not, or whatever your opinion is on the vote or whatever. I think it's very interesting how it's all tied up right now, it, uh, like so close to these dates with um, with what's going on with the threshold list and so on. All right, guys. So, again, none of this is financial advice. Do your own research. And the last thing I just want to say, if, if this comes to fruition and you know, the next tomorrow, the next few days we start running. I will not be making videos. I will not be posting if, you know, if we get some crazy price action, I will not be making videos because I never want to give you financial advice, right? It's up to you when you want to buy, when you want to sell. I, I cannot give you financial advice. So if we are here at the point where we start to see major volatility and we squeeze, you know, during the squeeze, you know, I, I cannot and will not make videos because I do not want anybody to take it as financial advice. I cannot tell you when to get in, get out, none of that. I just want to give you, you know, the information that I see and my opinions and thoughts. And so that's the video, guys. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks for coming back. Appreciate all of you. And uh, hopefully we make some tendies and get paid. I right? because we're at the point where it's a deadline, right? These dates to me, this is a make or break point. Um, and we have to just see what happens the next couple of days. But it's all very interesting to me. And that's why I came back today to make this video for y'all. But thank you so much. Catch you guys in the next one.